Hello everyone, I just hit uh, 10,000 subscribers and it took my channel some 18 days to grow from 5,000 subscribers to 10,000 subscribers. So I guess you guys do kind of enjoy the content I'm creating here. And I decided to award uh, one person uh, with the official FIDE digital chess clock, the DGT 2010. Uh, but we'll get back to that uh, after I show you the game. So, as you all know, Mikhail Tal won a very strong tournament in Porto the Interzonal, in 1958. Uh, after that, he won the Candidates tournament held in uh, Belgrade, Zagreb and Bled in 1959. A very strong tournament and uh, he won it uh, one and a half point ahead of Paul Karras. So, uh, here he is. This is uh, 1960 and uh, he's playing in a beautiful tournament hall in Moscow, the Pushkin Theater. In front of him is sitting the world champion Mikhail Botvinnik. And uh, this is game 6 of the match. Tal actually won the first game of the match, they drew the 4 next games, and uh, this is game 6. And uh, you might think that, well, since uh, he's one point in the lead in the World Championship match, you know, he's, he, he has the black pieces, he might uh, play it cool, you know, just to preserve his lead. Uh, but Tal has a different approach, and uh, you'll see what I mean. Uh, so Botvinnik is white and he plays c4, the English opening. Tal goes to knight to f6, we have knight to f3, g6, g3, bishop to g7, the king's Indian, we have bishop to g2, castles, d4, d6, knight to c3, knight b to d7, uh, Botvinnik castles, and Tal plays e5. We have e4, c6, h3, queen to b6, and uh, Botvinnik plays d5. c captures on d5, c captures on d5, and Tal plays knight to c5. And if you look at this position, this is somewhat of an equal position. Uh, White does have a bit more space since he did push d5. Uh, but as Tal always says, if you want to go for the win with the black pieces, you do have to give White some sort of a positional advantage. So Botvinnik plays knight to e1. We have a bishop to d7, knight to d3. Uh, Tal captures on d3, uh, Botvinnik captures on d3. And we have rook f to c8. Uh, rook to b1. And now Tal plays knight to h5, preparing to push f5. We have bishop to e3, attacking the queen, queen to b4. We have uh, queen to e2, uh, rook to c4, and now rook f to c1. And Tal plays rook a to c8, just doubling up. So Botvinnik plays king to h2, uh, just improving the position of his king and adding some protection to that, that h3 pawn. And Tal pushes f5. We have e captures on f5, and now bishop captures on f5, and now uh, this bishop is attacking the rook on b1. So, Botvinnik plays rook to a1. And uh, this is one of the most critical positions in any world championship game ever played. Uh, I mean, I really want you to put yourself in Botvinnik's shoes here. I mean, uh, you're one hell of a guy. I mean, you've been world champion for so long. Uh, you, you've defeated champions like Lasker, Capablanca, and Alejin. And you're playing against this 23-year-old guy, they call him the Magician from Riga. And uh, he plays a move like Knight to F4. And uh, this is uh, this is one, one crazy position. I mean, what do you do here? Uh, let's see, the Knight is attacking your Queen. He's also threatening to capture your Bishop. Uh, obviously, you can capture the Knight, but there are so many complications here. And uh, Botvinnik spent a lot of time calculating this variation. And... Uh, I mean, uh, one thing you should know that uh, there were a lot of people in the uh, in the playing hall, and uh, but there were even more people outside the playing hall, people who weren't able to buy tickets for this match, or were too late because the tickets were sold out. I mean, immediately, and uh, they were watching this game uh, on large demonstration boards outside of the Pushkin Theater, and uh, well, uh, <laughs> they were they were cheering pretty hard after after they saw this knight to f4 move. Uh, so after a while, Botvinnik decided to play g captures on f4, because, I mean, what you gonna do? The knight, the knight is there f to capture it. Uh, Tal plays e captures on f4, and uh, this is the position that, uh, well, a lot of people resent Botvinnik uh, for his next move, but... Uh, uh, and why is that? Because if you ask an engine, an engine will say, play a3, and uh, white has an advantage. But uh, Botvinnik was already low on time and he had to calculate a lot of things. He had to calculate bishop captures on a7, uh, he had to consider giving, giving the piece back, you know, just to improve. Uh, but Botvinnik actually played bishop to d2. And here Tal captures, queen captures on b2. 
so we have rook a to b1 attacking the queen and Botvinnik is now offering a rook uh, well the exchange actually just just you know to get some counterplay uh, but Tal isn't interested in this and Tal wants to complicate even more and he plays f3 so as usual in Tal games it's blow by blow by blow and uh, after f3 uh, Botvinnik again low on time decides to capture the queen rook captures queen so Tal captures an e2 and now Botvinnik plays rook to b3 uh, we have rook to d4 attacking the bishop, bishop to e1, and now bishop to e5 check. The king goes to g1, and now Tal plays uh, bishop to f4. And this is crushing because, uh, well, this rook has nowhere to go. If if you move the rook like rook to a1, then Tal simply plays rook captures on c3, uh, rook captures on c3, and simply rook to d1. And uh, this rook on a1 is undefendable. You can't really capture because the black will get a, get, get a queen and, uh, well, this would be over. So after bishop f4, uh, Botvinnik played knight to e2. So top captured, rook captures on c1, knight captures on d4, and uh, rook captures on e1 with check. We have bishop to f1, and now bishop to e4. Uh, we have knight to e2, bishop to e5, f4, bishop to f6, Botvinnik captures the pawn on b7, uh, bishop captures on d5, uh, rook to c7, uh, bishop captures on a2, rook captures on a7, and now bishop to c4. We have uh, rook to a8 check, king to f7, rook to a7 check, there's really nothing to play here, uh, king to e6, uh, rook to a3, and now Tal pushes d5. We have king to f2, uh, rook to, uh, bishop to h5 checking the king, king to g2, uh, king to d6, and now knight to g3, and Tal simply exchanges. Bishop captures on g3, bishop captures on c4, uh, d captures on c4, and king captures on g3. And as it usually is in Tal's games, after the storm has calmed, Tal is left playing a rook ending being a pawn up. So we have king to d5, uh, rook to a7, c3, rook to c7, king to d4, king to, uh, rook to d7, uh, checking Tal's king, uh, but in this position Botvinnik actually resigned without even waiting for a reply from Tal uh, Because Botvinnik has no problems assessing this position as, as winning for black But uh, let's just see what would happen here. We have uh, king e3 um, Rook e7 check, king to d2, rook d7 check, king c1 And now after king f2, uh, rook goes to e4 And now uh, Tal would threaten to play rook to b4 and uh, you know making a safe uh, safe line for the king on, on this b line so the c pawn can be pushed uh, so white would have to defend this probably by rook to b7 and now tal would simply gobble up all, all the pawns and uh, well being three pawns up in a rook's ending this is completely winning uh, but like i said after rook to d7 uh, botvinnik resigned without even waiting for a response from tal so yeah, a beautiful game, and uh, it's amazing to me that, uh, I mean, this is game 6 and Tal was one point in the lead and he plays a move like knight to f4, probably, probably, definitely my favorite move ever played in the world championship match. And uh, yeah, Tal continued to win the match and uh, he became the world champion at 23 years old, uh, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. Uh, I'm, I hope you enjoyed this game and uh, now on to the rules uh, of the giveaway. So the rules are pretty simple. Uh, in the comments of this video just write anything about Mikhail Tal, why you like the guy, why you dislike the guy, I mean maybe even something general. You can even make it poetic, uh, doesn't really mind. And after you've finished your comment just press spacebar and write hashtag Tal. Uh, I will put it, everything in the description so you can just read it. And like I said uh, the award will be uh, the official FIDE digital chess clock, so, I mean, it's my favorite clock to play Blitz and uh, official games, so I, I do think that uh, it is a decent prize. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I will uh, post the winner of, of this uh, giveaway on my Facebook page, which is also in the description below, and I, I will mention who the winner was in, in a video. Uh, I will choose the winner like I will write in the description on 1st of August at uh, 20 p.m. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. 
Uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.